and welcome to Shopping for the Real You. I'm Andrea Flommer, the author of Shopping for the Real You. And my guest again in our continuing series is the wonderful Brigitte Niash. Brigitte is the author of one of my very favorite books of all time. And you must buy it. I don't have it. I'm just going to say the name very clearly. It's called Living Longer, Living Well. And in my personal opinion, it's something that uh, has wonderful advice for women of all ages and men too, actually. A lot of this material would apply to men. So welcome again, Brigitte. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here with you. <laughs> and um, today we're going to talk about the, you know, the fundamental issue of why why we care about looking good. Why. <laughs> I mean, why, why it's an issue at our age. <laughs> at, at any age. Any so age. I'm going to start by asking you a question. And and I guess this is this is also fundamental. Who are we doing this for? Why are, you know, who is, who are we getting, who, who do we care about? Uh, we do it for ourselves. And many times in life we leave ourselves way back there somewhere and never think that we really are important. And it is for yourself because if you ask any woman when she feels good in life, the answer will always be when I look good. It's very, very simple and it's very deep also. Yeah. That's true. I mean, there are mornings I get up, you know, and I look in the mirror and oh, it's not so great, you know. But then I take a shower, do my hair, do my makeup, and the day looks so much better. Yeah. So it's really for ourselves that we do it and to increase our self-confidence and like I said the question you can ask any woman when do you really feel good about yourself and she will always say when I look good it's like an automatic answer that comes out yeah <laughs> yeah you know it sort of flies in the face of, of right. a lot of the uh, the the advice we get lately which is you know it just the inside is more important and that reflects on the outside but Girls, I'll tell you, when I wake up and look in the mirror, and if it doesn't look so good in the mirror, I don't feel so good. And Brigitte, you're exactly right. As soon as I put on some makeup or fix my hair or just care a little bit about how I look, I feel I feel physically better. Oh, absolutely. You feel physically better, yeah. And you, everything you do, you do better and with more joy and with more satisfaction, yeah. So absolutely it makes a, a huge difference how you look. And we should never forget that, yeah. Uh, the other thing, when it comes to the inside and the outside, that talk, and there's a lot about it, at the moment out there that you know it doesn't matter how you look on the uh, on the outside as long as you're a beautiful person on the inside there is one thing we must never forget you have never another chance to make a first impression and that first impression says something about your inside uh, mm -hmm. so I think it's very very important to remember that because you know if you let's say somebody looks has their hair is not uh, combed or washed or it, it looks sloppy you, you don't get a good impression about that person and you don't think oh maybe she's beautiful on the inside <laughs> you, you kind of write her off I, oh she looked a mess <laughs> you know what I'm saying and I'm not saying everybody looks a mess but I think that it really truly uh, says something about a person and that first impression I mean the friends you have or people you know you always remember how they looked when you first met them don't they don't you I mean, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. I mean, how many people tell you, oh, you know, when I met her, she wore this beautiful red cardigan and she looked so great. Or, well, you know, she had a bad day. She didn't look so great that day. You remember, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can, you never get a chance to make up for this first impression or to improve it, yeah. So I think it's once for yourself and then for others. And the inside business is lovely, and but I think it still is projected a little bit on the outside. Like when you, um, a responsible person or a tidy person, that shows, you know, yeah. how responsible you are. It shows in your in what you wear and, and how you behave and everything. And a, a sloppy person will never come across. She she probably is a very nice, beautiful person on the inside, but it will take the people who meet her a lot longer to find that out than if she had made a first a 
the first impression that was favorable. Make yeah. some effort. And I think in the work that you do with um, disenfranchised women who are getting back into the workforce, you must see this reinforced oh. constantly. It is, it's like a miracle, you know. I mean, and, and it, it is a miracle in the sense which is very easy to achieve. It's not a big miracle that needs months and months of analysis or anything like that. <laughs> you, have, you have an hour and you put them in, in something that looks good on them and they feel good in and they straighten up and, and they are so perky all of a sudden. I mean, you know, and, and that's what it does when you look good. It's not the clothes so much. It's, it's that you look good. The whole look has to be yeah, yeah. something that you feel good confident about and you know there's nothing more attractive than a confident woman mm. I, there was a, a wonderful video going around that I shared on my Facebook page of uh, I don't know who the designer was but he took homeless men yeah and dressed them up and put them on the runway on a fashion runway oh my god the transformation in these people it was just and i've seen them do this with um hairdressers will go to people who are homeless on the street and offer free haircuts yeah 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 now it is a, it is a, an affirmation of yourself you know somehow and you're telling the world something and so i think it's very important that we look our best you know i don't mean you have to be terribly dressed up a lot of people confuse that they think you have to dress up and you know do a whole lot of uh, you don't you just have to look nice I would yeah. call it, you know, yeah. and um, because, like I said, oh, I don't, you know, and don't ever say, I don't care anymore. I hear a lot of women say that, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it also says, I don't care about myself anymore, and not caring about myself also says, I don't care about you. It means, I don't care, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly it, I don't <laughs> you know, and that's not a good. That's not good. I mean, if, you know, people don't want you not to care about them. Yeah, and I mean, I always uh, see it, and I think I maybe I mentioned this before, when I first went to this, um, you know, bottomless closet where I helped the women uh, dress and um, be ready for the interview. I kind of. Uh, dress very plainly, you know, like very, I thought, oh, I don't want, you know, to intimidate them or, or whatever, and I dress very plainly. Well, I changed my mind very fast, because when I dress normally like I do, or even a little prettier, with a nice scarf or a nice jewelry, they they feel even better that I help them. That's because right. you, see, you see what I'm saying is, look at me, I can help you to be that, or, you know, and that's very, very important, yeah, and that's people right. always... Uh, they identify with that then. Yeah, that's, so. that's exactly the word I was going to use, that it sets up a kind of identification and and that's a good kind of identification, you know, you but, care, I care. Yeah, yeah you know, and uh, there are, sometimes somebody says, but you look so nice, yeah, thank you for helping me, but uh, you look very nice. And, and so I don't, uh, you know, I got over this very quickly trying to be plain because that's not wh who they want them to help, you see, they, they, they're more they feel more uh, reaffirmed by somebody who looks nice too, yeah. That's and right. and it's very interesting to see the change in these people, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so that this, this business, I don't care, is definitely a, a <laughs> sentence we should totally forget. <laughs> you know, I just I just wrote a blog post having to do with something about this, and it's my personal opinion. This whole minimalist. Um, style and fashion where it's sort of boxy and plain and no adornment to me it's it's first of all i find it very boring but um it kind of says i don't care i'm no better than you are we're all the same and it's it's just it takes the the juice out of life i think it does and are we really all the same <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> what's wonderful is that we're each different right. Exactly. You know, and I mean, uh, uh, if you want to be, uh, you're right. You see so many people without any adornment. I call that. Yeah, just a pair of earrings. Again, if you're not into very heavy jewelry or something, right. you don't have to wear that. I mean, look at the beautiful necklace you're wearing, and it just gives the right touch to uh, to your outfit today. You see, yeah. and, and it, it shines and it says something. It's pretty. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, this is something that I have a bit um, of difficulty with, that pretty seems to have been taken out of the dictionary, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it, it has to be, like you say, minimal, plain. <laughs> you know? and, and I think, again, everybody uh, likes to look at something pretty. And, you know, women have always been pretty. Yeah. So why not they care about it? care about it, yeah. yeah. So that's uh, the other thing. But uh, I read something years ago, which really frightened me, that one day, 
women and men will dress exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're not far from it. Huh? <laughs> you look at some of the younger couples on the weekend, they are dressed exactly the same. Yeah, and uh, so I think, I hope that's not going to really become true for every situation in life. You know? <laughs> I agree, I hope it's not true. I mean, and the thing is that there are so many different kinds of beauty. You you don't have to copy somebody else's beauty, but let's talk about that. What what can a person do to look good? I mean, if we care about looking good, where does somebody start? Well, I think the first uh, thing is mentally you have to make a commitment to yourself. Mm -hmm. You cannot say always, I don't have time. I think that's the other excuse. Oh, I don't have time to do my hair again. I don't have time for this or that. Uh, it's a commitment and it's a, a question of priority. You see, you can say to uh, to a friend, no, I can't today because you have to go to the hairdresser. Yeah, uh, uh, or you can, um, uh, you know, uh, say, I don't do this or that because I want to take a bath. I want to look after after myself. You need this little time off to look after yourself. So it's a mental commitment that you have to make to say, now it's my time, I'm going to take care of myself a little bit. And not overly, you know, I don't mean you have to only think about yourself, but there have to be moments when a haircut is more important than uh, going to the movies with your girlfriend. You can, that is not going to run away and you can still do that. So it's this commitment to, um, you know, to, to make the effort. To, it's a commitment to make the effort to look better, yeah. And uh, take a, a, an honest look at yourself and say, all right, now what could I improve, yeah of myself. Maybe a new haircut, maybe some new clothes. and It makes little steps. It doesn't have to be a total transformation uh, from one day to another. I, I think you just have to start with yourself and say, all right, well, maybe I should have a manicure. I never had a manicure. People say, I haven't had a manicure in, in months. I don't know when to go. It doesn't take that long. It's 45 minutes and you're out. Yeah. So again, it all starts in your mind. That's where really it starts to look better. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. So that, what I think is very, very uh, important to, uh, you know, to make yourself a priority here and there. Yeah, and and look at your wardrobe. Oh, my wardrobe! It's oh, I, I can't find anything in it. It's so stuffed. I don't know what's hanging in there anymore. You know, that's really, and we're all busy and we have busy lives. But again, it's a matter of priority and saying this Saturday afternoon, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to go through this wardrobe and check out what I don't want to wear anymore and see what I have. Yeah, that. It, so that's really the first step to say, okay, where's my place? When am I looking after myself? You look after the children, after friends, after businesses. There has to be a little time. And it's really a question of priority. It's not that you don't have the time. You just have to prioritize a little better. Yeah, yeah that's, that's absolutely true. And I think in, in some future episodes, we should talk very specifically about some of the the, the fashion things that people can do to look better, because um, that's a whole topic into itself. Yes, uh, and you have a book on it, I mean, which is very, very good, by the way. If people thank follow you. <laughs> you'd say in there, we wouldn't even have to have this talk. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I learn something from everyone. I yeah. think there's, nobody has all the knowledge everywhere. And I love the fact that because you've been a model and because you work with people sort of in raw material and then put them into something that looks fantastic, I think that would be a great uh, episode and I think we'll do that very soon. Yeah, uh, uh, you mentioned that I was a model. That's why I learned discipline. You see, you had uh -huh. now, you see it because it was a job. So the discipline came with it, yeah, and many people, for them, it's not the job. So again, they don't have time, they say, uh, because they don't think that they're important also, yeah. But that's really where I learned uh, the discipline, yeah. You, you couldn't goof off, you, <laughs> you had to do it, you had to do what was required of you. And at that time, as I said before, you couldn't, I mean, now the models, they have their, uh, you know, pictures under their arm and jeans on and a t-shirt. We couldn't do that. We had to walk in as if we were ready to step in front of the camera. Oh, interesting. That, which is a very big difference from today. And uh, But that taught me something that's been very useful. Yeah. Because like I said, here and there, you know, yeah, do I really have to wash my hair today? Maybe not, you know. And ever, if you ever ask that question, that means you have to wash it. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> But I mean, you get up, so maybe you had a late night or something. I'm not saying that, you know, I, I do everything all the time perfect. But I, and I also come across the difficulties or 
maybe what I don't want to do today, do I really, you know, exercise today? But then in the end, I pull myself together most of the time and do it because you feel better afterwards, you know, like you said, you, you, you feel better. And the other thing I would like to mention is people say, oh, I just go across the street, nobody will see me. <laughs> that's a dangerous that's one. That's a dangerous one. I mean, I, because that's just the day you run into the person you least wanted to see the way you look now. You right, know? right. So it's, uh, even if it's across the street, you know, comb your hair, a little bit of lipstick, a little bit of mascara, and a nicer shirt, and that makes a difference. Yeah. Again, yeah. you don't have to get dressed up or all ready to go across the street, but just a little effort, you know, and it, it pays off. Yeah. I mean, so. Uh, so many of our uh, <clears throat> of my viewers are um, moving on up, you know, in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. And what makes me very heartened is that there are more and more websites and information for women yeah. our age right. at, who are saying exactly what you're saying. Care yeah. about care about it. Yeah, right. And you know the other thing is too, like you said in the beginning, when you look, uh, when you go through the process and you look nice that day, it makes you mentally more alert, uh, more open to things, also more open to things. You see, if you walk around and you know you don't look your best, you really don't want to talk to anybody. You know, <laughs> you you kind of want to hide. You know, you you don't want to talk to them because you don't look right. So looking good, you will be open and you will be friendly and you easily talk to people and, and make new friends, which is also important. Yeah. You know? So there's so many benefits to this feeling good about yourself. And it's right. and you feel good about yourself when you know that you look good. Yeah. And I always say if you want to test if you look good, watch how other women look at you. Not men, because you know that's a different story. Uh, but when you <laughs> When you look good, uh, you will see how many people look at you. Women, yeah, they, they kind That's of right. people look, and then you know you're all right for the day. Yeah. That's right. And I bought very, I bought the most fabulous um, uh, leopard <laughs> coat <laughs> at Zara. It was inexpensive, but it looks fabulous. And in my town, which is a college town, and people don't dress up too much, I just thought I'm going to wear this today. It was a chilly yeah. day, yeah. and you're exactly right. Women yeah. caught my eye and smiled. They Absolutely. Said, this is cool. This is a cool thing. Yeah, yeah. She's the same age I am, and she's wearing something really cool. Yeah, and also that's inspiring for the other people who you smile at you or you talk to, uh, you know, to be more. Um, and I think the stores, I think eventually they're going to get it that, you know, we are very important and uh, we don't wear only very short dresses. I mean, uh, for example, now the spring coming. Looking at everything, they are all way above the knee, and I feel like saying, doesn't anybody think of the designers of the that maybe uh, somebody likes a longer skirt for whatever reason? Yeah, but it's all short, short, short. Yeah. So you you're right. When we get when we look good, we do inspire the younger people, even people of That's our right. age and the younger people. They say, oh look at this. You know, when I'm sure when you saw some college students, they saw you in that coat. Yeah, they, they've been very. Um, I mean, it, it's a hopeful message you're giving. That's right. That's right. You know, that the future is can be fun. Can be fun, and and doesn't have to be dowdy and you know. That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, this is wonderful. This is inspiring, and um, I want to thank you again, Brigitte Niash, and for all my readers, please check out her book, Living thank Longer, you. Living Well, and uh, we'll be checking in again next time. With more information, uh, we have several topics coming up. One is about shopping when you go on vacation, because even though we're in the dead of winter when this is being recorded, we know that the summer will come. Yes, that's and good. we're going to talk a little bit uh, specifically about fashion in the future. Uh, maybe when we do the shopping one, we could uh, include the budget on it, because that's very important. I think that's brilliant. You know, I, 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 so, so many people want yeah. to know that. Yeah. yeah. But I would like to leave you with something my grandmother always used to say. I always quote my grandmother, as you might have noticed. Right. Absolutely. You know, she was up early and she would have a clean apron on, which was at the time what you what you did, you know. And she would comb her hair early in the morning. And I, you know, when I was older, I remarked on it. And she looked at me once and she said, "Look, you never know who's at the door when the bell rings." Hmm. And I think that's such a lovely thought. Yeah. She was always ready to look, you know. 
Shower stuff. That she could, uh, you know, welcome anybody who was ringing the bell without feeling, oh my God, I didn't get myself together, you know. So just just another thought to make yourself a priority. That's wonderful. And um, for all you mothers out there who are pulling your hair out now and saying, I can't do this. Oh, yes, yes you can. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And again, from the very, what Brigitte said at the very beginning, this isn't about anybody else. This is about starting with yeah. you. And the other thing, uh, don't be, you know, like I said, if you think of the whole thing, it might look frightening that you need a half a day or something. You don't. It, start with 10 minutes a day. And then make it half an hour. I mean, start with a little bit or start with one part of your body. Start with your hair or with the clothes. You don't have to do it all at once. You can take baby steps and get there eventually. Brilliant. Brigitte Dineos, thank you very much again for joining us on Shopping for the Real Year. <laughs> thank you. And, and please show your book tour uh, to your uh, followers. I mean, it's so good. <laughs> it is so good. And, uh, <clears throat> If, if everybody followed you what in what you are saying there, we wouldn't even be talking. <laughs> Thank you again for the plug. And we'll talk again next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Andrea. Thank you.